Shemai Palb, howdy everyone, and today I'm looking at a new lens that's caused great excitement for users of Sony's full-frame mirrorless cameras, the Tamron 28-75mm f2.8 DI3 RXD. It's only for Sony's mirrorless E-mount cameras, full-frame or APS-C, and it costs around £700 or $800. US dollars. I'd like to say a big thank you to Tamon's UK distributor for loaning me one of the only review copies of this lens that they had for a week for testing purposes, although as usual this is a totally independent review. A fast standard zoom lens with a maximum aperture of f2.8 is a vitally important option for manufacturers to offer on any camera system. It provides a flexible compromise between having a workable zoom range and still having a wider maximum aperture for shooting in low light or getting somewhat out of focus backgrounds. Personally, I've come to prefer using prime lenses for my own work, but fast standard zoom lenses are still a more fun and simple option to use and they're very important for wedding photography and photojournalism and other fields where you need to change focal length quickly. So far, the only native fast standard zoom lens for Sony's full-frame mirrorless cameras, which you don't need an adapter for, has been the gigantic and hideously expensive G Master 24-70mm f2.8 lens. I haven't tried it myself, apparently it's great, but it costs around £1,800, over US$2,000, and its giant size kind of makes a mockery of the more compact design philosophy of mirrorless cameras. I would never buy that particular lens myself. So this new option from Tamron is a breath of fresh air. It's much, much smaller and lighter, and less than half the price of the Sony lens. The good news is that it's designed from the ground up to work with Sony's cameras, so in-camera corrections, eye autofocus and fast hybrid autofocus are all available as normal, and they all worked properly in my testing, including the eye autofocus feature. It's also worth noting that, just like the expensive Sony G Master lens, this Tamron option does not feature image stabilisation. Now, that's an unusual feature to omit these days, and perhaps a slightly risky decision from Tamron, but then again, perhaps not, as the majority of Sony's newest cameras are coming with in-body image stabilisation now, which is very good these days. It's also worth noting that this lens's zoom range starts at 28mm instead of the more traditional 24mm. Here's some video to show the difference, and I shot this bit of video using a different lens, obviously. This keeps the lens's size and weight, and ultimately price, down. But some people will miss having 24mm available on such a lens, it's a nice dramatically wide angle, and if you're using an APS-C camera, then 28mm really is not a wide angle at all. Now let's look at the build quality. The lens's body is made of strong plastic with a brushed finish to it. It weighs just over half a kilogram. It doesn't feel heavy, but it does feel nice and solid. It's based on a metal lens mount with a weather sealing gasket around the edge, albeit one of the thinnest ones I've ever seen. Just like every E-mount autofocus lens I've tested so far, the focus ring is electronically coupled to the lens's autofocus motor and turns extremely smoothly. It responded quite precisely when I was manually focusing. The autofocus motor itself works silently and quite quickly, although it will hunt just a little before finally locking onto your subject if you're shooting in darker conditions. It worked very accurately in my experience, which is the main thing for me, in stills mode or in video mode. The earliest copies of this lens had some autofocus problems when shooting video which were widely publicised, but Tamron seems to have been very quick to fix them with firmware updates. My copy of the lens worked perfectly all the time during my testing period, I'm glad to report. The lens's zoom ring is rubberized with gentle indentations that don't pick up much dust. It turns very precisely without any stickiness but it's not actually very smooth to turn, it feels slightly rough as you move it. 
personally, like a lot of other photographers, I really prefer to have the zoom ring at the back of the lens rather than at the front, but you'll get used to it. It all comes with the usual front and rear caps and a little plastic lens hood. The lens's filter diameter is 67mm. Overall, while it doesn't feel like it's carved out of granite, the fit and finish of this lens is nice. It works well, looks good, and it balances really well on my Sony a7R II. It's a smart enough little design. Alright, let's look at the all-important image quality. We'll start on a full-frame camera, my Sony a7R II, with its demanding 42 megapixel sensor. Inner camera corrections are turned on. At 28mm and f2.8, the lens is crazy sharp in the middle of the image. Colours are neutral, contrast is excellent. The corner image quality is noticeably softer, but not too bad. The corners get steadily sharper from f4 to f5.6 to f8 and f11. Pretty good. Let's zoom in halfway to 50mm. It's the same story. From f2.8, the middle of the image is razor sharp, and the corners are a bit softer, but still not bad and better than they were at 28mm. Stop down to f4, f5.6, f8, and f11 for gradual, small improvements which lead to excellent image quality. Finally, let's zoom in to 75mm. At f2.8, sharpness in the middle continues to be excellent, although contrast is just slightly lower than it was before here. The corners are, again, just a little softer. Stop down to f4 for a little more contrast and resolution in the corners and back in the middle. At f5.6, the corners look great, and f8, f11, and even f16 also look fantastic. So. On a full-frame camera, the Tamron lens is consistently impressively sharp, with very good contrast. The middle of the image is always excellent, and the corners are quite good at wider apertures and very sharp when stopped down a little. It's a really solid performance for a zoom lens. Now this particular lens is a less attractive proposition for users of Sony's APS-C sensor cameras. On APS-C, the widest angle of 28mm is not very wide at all. But just in case anyone's interested, here are some test results for you from my 24MP APS-C camera, my little Sony A5100. In the middle of the image, the lens is always razor sharp, straight from f2.8, although at 75mm we see a little ghosting at that widest aperture, stop down to f4 for perfect image quality there at 75mm. When it comes to the corner image quality, at f2.8, throughout the entire zoom range from 28 to 75mm, the corners are noticeably soft, getting quite sharp at f5.6 and very sharp from f8. So, it's a very consistent performance on APS-C. Brilliant resolution in the middle of your images, some softness in the corners though, until you stop down to f5.6. Alright then, let's look at vignetting and distortion on a full frame camera, they're not an issue on APS-C. These pictures are taken without in-camera corrections. At 28mm, we see some moderate barrel distortion, although nothing too horrendous, and dark corners at f2.8. At f4, the corners brighten up, and at f5.6, we see quite even illumination. At 35mm, that barrel distortion straightens out. By the time you've reached 75mm, it's flipped into pretty notable pincushion distortion, and that vignetting has gotten worse, the corners are pretty dark at f2.8, they brighten at f4, and f5.6 the vignetting is largely cleared up. So, it's quite a typical distortion characteristic for this kind of zoom lens, but perhaps a little more vignetting than usual. The Tamron 28-75 has a good minimum focus distance, getting you pretty close to your subject. At its widest angle, you can get as close as 19cm to your camera's sensor. And its close-up image quality there is excellent, straight from f2.8. Now, if you zoom into 75mm, then that minimum focus distance increases to 39cm, still pretty close. 
zoomed in, the close-up image quality is a bit soft at f2.8. At f4, the contrast is greatly improved, but you see purple fringing on contrasting edges. That continues at f5.6, but at f8, it's cleared up. Let's see how the lens works against bright light. It's a good performance here, contrast holds up quite well, and there's not too much flaring when shooting at wide angles or when zooming in. It holds up better than average. Finally, bokeh. At f2.8, you can get pretty out of focus backgrounds. The bokeh characteristic of this lens is a little complex. At wider angles, the quality of this lens's out of focus backgrounds is generally smooth. Zoom in though, and from about 50 to 75mm, it can get quite ugly in most pictures, particularly in situations with complex backgrounds. Deeply out of focus backgrounds will be fine though. So, overall, the Tamron lens has a lot of strengths, besides being comparatively good value. It's very sharp, it has vibrant, neutral colours, and strong contrast. Distortion and vignetting are about what you would expect for a fast standard zoom lens. I would say that the quality of its bokeh is its weakest point, and for some photographers that can be a deal breaker, and some other photographers will be put off by the widest angle of only 28mm. But it can shoot nice and close to your subject, and it has a quick enough autofocus system, as well as decent build quality and a fairly compact size. Really, it's a very well done optic, impressively sharp. It's going to be popular, and deservedly so. Tamron are probably onto a real winner here. It definitely comes recommended.